The tower has cleared us for takeoff, so I'm rolling out here onto 2-2. I like to take a look to the left up the approach and make sure somebody isn't coming in without calling the tower. It's been known to happen. I'll take a quick look and look down the runway. And the wind was uh, five or six knots right down the runway. Shouldn't really be a factor. So just push the power in. And I'll take a look down here in a second, just a quick look at the gauges. And now it's starting to get a little bit light on the tires. Really have to pay attention here. And here we're going to lift off. Now, only going to go about 10 feet up. I like to let it get to about 120 miles an hour before I start to climb away from the runway. That unloads the RPM, or it actually unloads uh, the high pitch cruise prop and lets me get up to about 2300 RPM. So here there's about 120 miles an hour, and I'm going to let it start to climb. And it just climbs a lot better if I let it get a, a little bit of forward speed there. And it's a nice long runway here at Bolton. Uh, here I'll be coming up to my neighborhood on the right, and I'll go over, you know, probably be about 800 feet AGL as we go over. And you can see it off there to the right. And as I come around here, I'll see the wife standing on the front porch working on Christmas decorations, and I'll make a w little wave here. And actually, it's two waves, one with my hand, which she probably can't see, and then we'll wave the wing. There we go. And as we climb out here, you can see it's a nice clear day. It's the second in a row. Uh, it was a little bit windier today, but not as much haze early on. A little bit of turbulence. We got bumped uh, more on the way back than on the way out here. It wasn't too bad. I uh, did try to get an idea for what the camera could see uh, long distance. I'll turn around here and try to look back at Columbus. Uh, I think I didn't turn quite far enough, uh, but even so, the resolution and the long distance stuff just isn't that good. Now, here I cut out some of the crews. Here's where I'm pulling into the first loop and coming across here, just kind of looking back. Now, here I could see downtown Columbus. You can't see it with this camera. And looking straight down, now power's off a little bit. And I'll feed the power back in and just going to let the nose keep coming on up and roll into a aileron roll to the left. Now we'll come out of this a little bit nose down, whole lot of airspeed, so we're going to go right back into a loop. Now this one I'm going to do a half roll at the top, almost a half cube and eight, and just roll out on the down line, uh, kind of mushily, and then just roll into a turn back to Mad towards the west and continue on to Madison County. And as I come around, um, I'm still frolicking a little bit. I think we got another loop coming and another roll after that. That's uh, so just coming back around to the west here. And nice gentle level off. There we go. And now after that turn, the airspeed's going to want to pick up a few more miles an hour. We did lose a little bit there, so that should be a long enough straight line. We're going to pull into a loop here. And this one we hang real nice at the top. Throttle back. gets real quiet for a second. And again, I can see all the way to downtown Columbus from here. And coming down through. And towards the bottom, I feed the throttle back in. Just let it come on up because that's great upline into this left aileron roll. There. And that's London, Ohio. I was just trying to get an idea of what kind of detail the camera could pick up from 2,000 feet. It seems to be aiming pretty well. That's exactly what I was looking at. So I think I've got it mounted to the headset pretty well. Uh, okay, here we are. This is about four miles south of the airport. I'm um, looking off to the right there. There's a guy in a 172 called on the left downwind, and I, I, I got him inside. He's off there on the right. And I'll go ahead and turn into the left downwind for 27. I've got that 172. He's uh, getting ready to turn left base up there, so he's really not going to be a factor. And we're just about, here's the end of the runway. So I'll start working the flaps down. That's going to need a lot of uh, change to the pitch trim. It takes uh, quite a bit of up nose trim to hold it once the flaps have gone down. I just saw the 172 go a beam our wing on final, so I can go ahead and start my left base to runway 27. And we're down to about 80 miles an hour here. Flaps are down. I'll be looking back towards the runway. As I get on base leg here, I'll look off to the right. Again, uh, somebody might be making a straight-in approach that's not active on the radio, so it's a good idea to take a look. 
And here I'm feeling that wind behind me. Um, so it looks going to be a strong left crosswind on landing here. So I want to start my turn to final early. With that wind behind me, it'll make it a wide turn. You can see the runway out there. It should be coming into alignment. I'm close enough in. I'm going to not going to go into a crab. I'm going to go right into a left wing low and right rudder to keep myself straight down the runway center line. So you'll see the horizon is going to maintain about a 5 to 10 degree bank all the way down final here. And what we'll try to do is I, I want to land left wheel first. The plane is going to have a natural tendency to want to turn left into that crosswind. So with the left wing low and the left tire touching first, that should hold it straight until I can get the rest of the airplane down. Uh, probably going to take a little bit of rudder control here to keep it straight down the runway. Now here I'm pulling back the throttle and in the flare, and I want to just grease it on, but of course I don't. And that's a pretty good size bounce there. There's the second, third, fourth bounce, and there's a little bit of left rudder to get us straightened out. And that gets us safely on the ground.